Yay. Yay. Hello, everybody, Yay. and welcome to Frag Dolls Live. This is our first actual live show that we're going to be bringing to pretty much kind of replacing our um, weekly kind of news segments that we do. So we're going to be talking about news that has to do with pretty much everything in the gaming industry to maybe news that is going viral on social media, any type of fun stuff that we can kind of come up and think with, uh, think about that we feel like we can probably discuss and fight about. So we're going to introduce each other. Um, I am Siren of the Fragdolls, and we have a special guest today. So we do have Smix that's here. She's going to be replacing the lovely Seltzer. Seltzer's traveling. So welcome to the show. And then we also Thank have we also have Pixel down here. What's up, Pixel? Hello. Good morning, everyone. And then we have the days. I like to call you the days. Yay. <laughs> um, days is going to be fantastic on the show because I know that her opinion will be... Uh, one that we cannot uh, keep quiet, I will say. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, then, and then we have the lovely Esper, and um, joined last but not least, our favorite Saber. Why well, I, I say oh. our favorite since we all love you. <laughs> oh, thanks. You guys are so nice. How is the chat doing today? Everybody doing fantastic? I hope. Yes. Yes. They, they better be having. They, they will all answer in about five minutes. <laughs> We yeah, are yeah. awesome! <laughs> Yay! Can one of you guys just check the stream and make sure it's good? It's up. It is good. Okay, good. You okay, because I don't have anything. <laughs> I don't want to over, like, my computer is about to die on me, I feel like. Um, so the very first thing that we are going to talk about, we kind of have a fun show for you guys. Um, we got about five to six topics, depending on how it goes. We have an hour that we are going to be talking about these topics. And then the second hour, we will be playing games. So we are going to give you guys the choice today. We can either play Destiny or we could play Town of Salem. So whatever you guys want to play with us, it's going to be our community game day. Um, so we'll be doing that later in the second hour of the show. So we'll give you guys kind of a choice on what you guys want to do today. So the very first topic that I'm going to get started with, um, the way that it's going to kind of work, I'm going to be moderating. I can still kind of give my two cents on the topics, um, but kind of keeping it, you know, if, if Saber gets out of line like she usually does, kind of reeling her back in. Uh, <laughs> really the, keeping the one frag doll that probably will not get out of line in any way and then next week we'll have a new moderator and so on and so forth so i gotta pick some of the news this week and to start it off uh, i saw some fun stuff i love ads and especially youtube ads that people you know will put up that maybe are kind of funny or whatever it is but technically Microsoft's new NFL ads have been kind of up. I don't know if you guys have seen them, uh, but they've been all over YouTube. They've been all over Xbox. They've been on the TV, and they spent a very pretty penny for this. Um, they spent, it says, over $400 million they've dumped into the NFL. So I kind of want to talk about the money that Microsoft is dumping into this, number one. And then the second take is... Um, Call of Duty kind of did the same thing and brought on all these celebrities and YouTubers to do some of their commercials. So having these type of partnerships, do you think it really sells games is kind of the topic here. So whoever wants to go first, be free to speak. So I'll, I'll jump in. Hi, my name is Saber. Um, <laughs> so are these... <laughs> You, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I assume that all of the people starring in these commercials and these YouTube videos are actual football players, right? right? Yes. Okay, because I don't watch football. I don't know the players. I don't know anything. So <laughs> what is sports how, ball? <laughs> sports ball. <laughs> so how much of whatever number you just said, Siren, went into just paying these guys to come on and, and do this versus, like, actually producing and editing and things like that? Like, I'm all, a, probably all $4 million. <laughs> there's a lot of them, right? There's, I mean, there's a lot of YouTube videos that they've done, and it's just like, I'm just looking through them, I'm like, wow, all right, that's just a lot of people that probably have to spend a lot of money to get, you know, on screen, so. Um, yeah, I mean, it doesn't exactly say, like, X amount of dollars was spent on blah, 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 but, I mean, just marketing in general, I think the amount of money that goes into it, you know, just, you got to pay the production crew, you got to pay the writers that are writing it, you got to pay, obviously, the NFL guys that are coming out here and doing it, and there's, like, multiple videos, um, my favorite one is the biggest one, which has got Drew Brees and a couple other people that's on the front page here, um, of CNET that we saw, you guys are seeing on the screen right now, but there's quite a few of them that you can kind of scroll through and watch, but, um, I mean, I don't know, I think the money that's, kind of dumped into it is that really saying this really going to make me want to xbox snap and do my fantasy football 
maybe for this one per se, but like Nicole, would you buy Call of Duty because you saw a commercial that's got celebrities and people in it from YouTube? Um, I mean, I personally wouldn't, but I think it's more along the lines of this is a they're they're promoting the game, this you know the sports ball game. Why not use real athletes? It's just like when promoting video games, why not use real gamers? Like I see their appeal, and people who are big fans are going to see their favorite you know players, and they're going to be more likely to try it because they're promoting it. So I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with it. I love that you said sports ball games. <laughs> that's that's what we're going to say now for all yeah, sports for, games. Sports forever. ball. <laughs> Um, I mean, Microsoft had that partnership with the NFL when they launched their, you know, when they debuted the Xbox One at E3, and they really made sure to highlight the NFL partnership as this huge deal. Yeah. And I feel like this is the first time that they're actually, like, using that partnership and really promoting the absolute crap out of it. So, I mean, this this is coming, right? And I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. They're really trying to target, like, this whole other segment of consumers out there that not only want to use their Xbox for gaming at this point, but also for like their entire home entertainment, like just set up. So I don't know. I, that could be good for them because like, PlayStation isn't really doing anything like that. And neither is Nintendo. And I know you have another news bit with Nintendo marketing towards another segment that isn't really tapped into right now. So that's good. I mean, they're trying to differentiate themselves, and we'll see if it works. Yeah, and yeah, it's... I... I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you're good, yeah. yeah, I was just going to say, uh, football is one of those super, super American things. Like, I don't personally watch a lot of it, but if there's a Super Bowl party, I'll be there. So I, I, it was super expensive. 400 million is a ridiculous sum of money, but I can see why they're, or what they're going for. They're trying to reach out to that insanely huge American demographic that's all about football and uh, obviously a lot of uh, casual gamers like a lot of just different gamers play Xbox but if they're able to tap into that huge market of I guess people that are into football and if any of what is just one of those people watch these series of YouTube ads then it's successful right it's they're yeah. tapping into this huge market of people so I mean, and I totally get that. I think one of the biggest things, too, that this kind of brings up for you guys with your Xboxes, have you used it for anything besides gaming? And a lot of people use it for Netflix, right? But these are kind of saying, hey, you can do all of your fantasy football games. You can do all your drafting on it. Um, you can, you know, pull up Skype and talk to your buddies while you're doing it. Do you guys use your Xbox for anything else besides maybe Netflix and games? Just Destiny, I think, for uh, for some. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, so you use it just for games, then you don't use it for anything else, music or right. anything. I do not, but I know a lot of people who do, which is what these ads are also tailored towards, right? Um, more of media. Yeah. Fantasy football is so huge too, so I can see why. Oh, yeah. I tap into it. Like, I know there's certain people in my life that when football season starts, like that's that's all they do. And so if they can see that fantasy football is easier to do, yeah, I know. They just go crazy over it. And having their Xbox One, having the capability to do that, they might not know. And maybe that might be that little incentive that pushes them over to make that investment. Yeah, I mean, it brings in that whole social aspect, so that's pretty cool. Somebody in chat just asked, um, and I actually think this is a pretty good question to kind of bring up. Uh, do you think the NFL's recent issues have an impact on this? I mean, does it matter? I know personally with all you know the recent you know abuse either child abuse spousal abuse puppy abuse whatever <laughs> abuse it is i mean i don't think it's just the nfl that those issues arise in i just they're in the spotlight they're in the media so we see it more often but what do you guys think about that will that affect the marketing of this i'm sure they were very careful as to who they selected to be on the ads so yeah. i think now yeah um I don't know. That's a really good question. I have not thought about it, so I need yeah. time to... I, I, I personally don't think it will, because when people are into their entertainment worlds, they're you know thinking about that. They're not really thinking about all the bad that's coming from it. Um, so we're going to move on to our next, our next array of questions. Um, so topic number two. This kind of hits home, and this is probably going to hit home for a lot of the girls that are on the team. Um, and the reason being is because we all work from home. 
So after raising $50 million, Reddit forces all remote workers to relocate to San Francisco. So obviously Reddit is pretty much the hub is in San Fran, but they do have quite a few employees who work from probably Florida or Miami or New York, wherever it is remotely. Um, so technically they raised over $50 million. It wasn't like they did a Kickstarter. Someone actually invested the $50 million to Reddit. And they're pretty much telling everybody that they have until the end of the year, so probably December 31st. Uh, it's your option if you're an employee and you work remotely to either move to San Francisco or we will part ways with you. So now there are, you know, a few things. If you do move, they obviously will help with, you know, moving costs. And if you decide, hey, I don't want to move, I got kids and a family, I can't do it, then they will give them a severance package. What do you guys think? I mean, at least they're taking care of them. I understand they want to take it to the next step. And sometimes that means having everybody in office so you can work more closely together. Because think about how many issues we have working remotely. Our <laughs> schedules don't line up because we're on different time zones. Somebody loses internet and we can't communicate with them anymore. So I understand that they want to take the company to the next level. But at least they're taking the correct steps to take care of their employees and if the employee can't move they're giving them a severance which I think is really important it's expensive here like I'd yeah. be like dreading it I'd be like no I have to move to San Francisco and I live here and I feel that way like it's very expensive yeah. to live here even though there's a lot of fantastic perks for living here there's always stuff to do great food and all that stuff if you're used to living in for example Florida where rent is seven hundred dollars for a two-bedroom two-bath apartment that's super nice to a place where you have to share you know a three bedroom apartment with days and you have to pay still a lot of money <laughs> more than what you're paying in Florida for a one bedroom. <laughs> it, it adds up. So I could see where some people would be like, okay, give me that severance. But Reddit is something that's still growing rapidly. And I mean, now Snoop Dogg owns part of the company. So I don't know if I would really what? shut up. Get out of I here. I didn't know Does that. Really? Yeah. Tell us more. You guys didn't know. No. Yes. no. Oh yeah. Snoop Dogg and, um, Jared Leto, Leto bought a stake in Reddit. They invested like 50 mil into the company. Oh, and so that's now, where the money came so from. They're, now, yeah, they're the <gasps> <gasps> Yeah, Snoop Dogg is a co-owner of Reddit. So yeah. now, I mean, why would you ever want to leave the company? You could be like, Snoop Dogg's my boss. Uh, Dude, I like <laughs> walk into the office. That would be like a really good perk to moving to San Francisco for the, do for the job because Snoop Dogg would just like roll in. He'd be like, hey, guys. And you're like, oh, my God, this is amazing. <laughs> That'd be so cool. I don't know. Yeah. I feel like that would totally motivate quite a few people. The, the yeah. thing that's funny about this, too, this policy change that says here was first sparred, uh, spotted by Basecamp founder David. Uh, and he was the one that tweeted about it kind of first. Mm -hmm. What do you guys feel about other big CEOs of other companies kind of chiming in and giving their two cents? Like, I mean, you if you're looking at the screen right now, it says... Uh, <laughs> Guess Reddit, suitable talent only exists in San Fran, quote. Approach explains like why they happens... need 50 mil to hire more devs, small pond, big crawler. I feel like that happens a lot in the tech industry where people will just, like, get into, like, Twitter back and forths and, like, talking about each other's companies. I think it just happens, um, especially because they probably, at the end of the day, end up knowing a lot of mutual friends and people, and especially with a big thing like Y Combinator, um, where the funds came from, like, Everyone just knows each other, right? And at, at the end of the day, everyone has a huge ego, so they all feel like they're right, and they <laughs> have to say all of their opinions about everything. It's going to happen. I mean, yeah. And sometimes they get this one with the hot water, so I, I wonder if they're, like, learning from each other. Like, oh, I shouldn't say that. I should say that. Probably not. Who knows? Um, but, yeah, and I've, it's good that you guys mentioned that because when I read this article first, I was wondering if any of that $50 million was going to go to help sort of subsidize the cost of people, of the employees moving out to San Francisco. And I wonder how much they were going to offer. Like maybe they would yeah. have some sort of That's like I wanted to know. rental like the relocation stipend. package. Yeah. Like San Francisco is so insanely expensive. Does really that, is. just do they just get like a little set amount? Do they all get the same like little lunchbox? Like, here you go. <laughs> this is like, your, I mean, this is the usually, money for your... <laughs> well, hopefully the people that take the job are good at negotiating. Yeah. <laughs> I think the help, biggest thing, too, is a lot of these people that are probably remote were probably there when it first kind of started as a company. Usually that's how it works, right? Or they're salespeople or whatever it is. But it kind of sucks if you've worked for Reddit for years and then all of a sudden a decision like this is made and you're like, shit, I'm going to have to lose my job now. 
over it, but yeah. hopefully if you've been there for years, your severance is really good. <laughs> yeah. So, Michelle, yeah. you have to move... Oh, that doesn't count. You don't count. Damn it, Nicole. I don't no, count. None of you guys count except Saber. Saber. <sighs> huh? you, Ubisoft says you have to work from the office. Same job, same everything. You would do it, right? Uh, I would <laughs> probably do it. It, but I, I mean, I am one where I just keep looking at San Francisco, you know, the, the housing market, and I just keep getting shocked every time I go on to be like, oh, a studio apartment that's really far away, but still in the city uh, for like 3K a month. No, oh. thank you. Like, no, that is way too much money. So it would, I, I would, I would definitely try to negotiate uh, with the, the parent company uh, for some sort of relocation stipend or help some or money. something because that's so much. I mean, I live outside of D.C., but even in D.C., I mean, we used to be the second most expensive city. Uh, it was New York, us, and then and then I think you guys and you guys just bumped right up to the top over New York. Number one, guys, number yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. damn it. We're on it. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> don't, don't celebrate. No, that's so I bad. Say, is that something to celebrate? <laughs> that makes no sense. <laughs> no, no, it's actually it's depressing. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, we're just hiding the tears that are yeah. Yeah. rolling that's down our faces right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the tears. Okay, we're going to go on to topic number three. Um, so this one probably doesn't really affect any of you since you don't have kids. <laughs> oh, so uh, you think. That we know <laughs> about. Oh, no. uh -oh. That we know about. Um... So Nintendo launched a new website aimed at kids and parents. So we'll pull up the site in just a second. Um, but they pretty much named the website Play Nintendo. It's a hub for everything kid-friendly that Nintendo has produced. So anything that you can think of that is probably under the 17 age gap um, that has ever been created by Nintendo will be on this site. And then there's also a parent section for it, too. So what I think... The biggest thing that kind of would be brought up with this is obviously the website is there. It's accessible. That's totally cool. It's easy. But then you got your kids on the internet that are young. So I think kind of having that parent guidance. Um, what do you guys think? I mean, obviously you don't have kids, so it's going to be a little bit different for you guys to kind of talk about. But what do you think about a company that's solely focusing, you know, a website just for the kids that buy their games? Look at it's all the smart. colors. <laughs> I know, I just went on the site. I just feel like this is such a testament up. to the age that we live in now. Like, I, I mean, at least back in my day, like, this would have, I mean, okay, I say that like I'm so old. I'm not that <laughs> But I'm just saying, it. this just goes to show how much more, I guess, gaming is becoming so mainstream, I guess. Like, back... Okay, again, I shouldn't talk like that. When I was a child, <laughs> you know, Back in the day. Getting, getting family and child education, we got like the, you know, the paperbacks. Like, you know, you fill in colors with your crayons, the 64 pack. Now you oh, can get yeah. on your gaming console or whatever you want and you can all do it. You can just do any of that. So, I don't know. I just think it goes to show this huge shift because I just feel like now it's not just gaming. You can do um, all sorts of games where it actually teaches your child how to do different spatial awareness, things like this. I don't know. It's just, it's cool to see because this would have never happened I, even like 10 years ago, I think. I think, uh, you know, when I was, when I was a kid way back in the day, um, oh, you they, like there weren't really a whole lot of hubs for, you know, kids to go on to. And like, at least this is a safe, place on the internet right like there are so many other websites that kids could go on to that are just way worse um so at least YouTube. this is yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> so i mean if if they're gonna target a website at kids at least it's this and like we were talking about you know gaming companies targeting different markets this is one of them so you know sony's going after the hardcore gamers Xbox, Microsoft is going after like the people that want the total entertainment package, and at least Nintendo is now like really honing in on bringing back um, like children and that market to them. Um, because when I was a kid, like that's what I loved most. Like I would game on my SNES and my NES all the time, and it was it was awesome. Like Nintendo was magical for me in that way, and I think it's it's actually really great to see now as an adult that they are once again bringing that magic back to the kids because that's what they're really good at so go mm -hmm. nintendo 
Yeah. yeah. And if you, sorry, I'm, can I jump in real quick? Yeah. <laughs> So on the Play Nintendo site, you go to the main page and it's all like very colorful, definitely for kids. And there's this um, kind of hard to see button for parents. And I'm on the parents site now. And it seems like it's a pretty good resource for just learning about gaming. If you're a parent and you don't know about games, you don't really understand why your kid's so into them. You know, this has like um, links to good articles about gaming and how science looks at the benefits of playing games and a crash course on street passing. What is street passing and why well, my are people kid be addicted kidnapped to it? from street passing? <laughs> no. Fair questions, right? So, uh, it's yeah. kinda, so it's kind of nice because that's a market that's maybe traditionally not educated on gaming. Um, I mean, more so now because we have, you know people like our age growing up and then having kids themselves and they're gamers so there's more of that now but for the parents who aren't as familiar with gaming this is kind of a nice resource i think it's great it's really helping bring the parents more into the child's extracurricular activities and their passion as well which i think is needed for kids to continue to grow into the gaming industry's support of their parents right which will only make this industry bigger and better so i'm glad that they're doing it so I'm on the site right now, and the first thing that kind of pops up, I mean, I've kind of just been clicking around, is the Facebook uh, share and like. If it's a kid's site, why would they need that? Well, I mean, I think maybe they can also, you know, I feel like older kids can use too, like 13, 14, 15, because I think it's like, what, 15 or 14 is the age where you can start using Facebook? 13. 13? Yeah, yeah. so... I mean, 13-year-olds are still considered children, but they still have Facebook pages. So, I mean, right now I'm taking an awesome quiz about what's my Kirby copy ability. And this is totally <laughs> on the kids' section, and I'm, like, really enjoying it. Like, I'm like, my most terrifying in-game attack is called, and I have all these options. Like, I, I mean, personally, I wouldn't mind sharing this with my friends because I think they would like it, and I'm, you know, a grown-ass adult. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're taking the quiz now. Yes, see, it's awesome. Now, if you, <laughs> now, if you guys had kids, Kim, and you sat them down to play on this website and just kind of go through stuff, and your child is eight years old, would you walk away and let them just chill, or would you sit there the entire time? I'd walk away. I'd walk on away. a Nintendo website? Yeah. No, but I I'm saying you wouldn't have the fear. people their kids on YouTube, okay? That's what I'm That's saying. You wouldn't have the place. fear that they would <laughs> somehow get off of the website and get on to something that's probably not appropriate. Not if you put the correct permissions Settings on your computer. Instead. Yeah. We were allowed to go on the internet um, at my school when I was in, I think it was like the first grade. And I think they just had, you know locks on on content that you could see and what you could not see so if you if you really wanted to be a protective parent you could do that and i think that would be totally fine yeah i had the aol child version or something so uh, <laughs> yeah back, I mean, I in, back in the days of aol <laughs> i mean just oh. aol in general the chat rooms that you would go into and oh, yeah. oh my god, god. Were, were, i've never been a little sometimes. kid who'd be like age sex live and i'd be like oh, 12 Oh my gosh, I didn't even know what that meant. I went into my first <laughs> chat room and I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, I'm doing something kind of dangerous. And then I went you in so much. <laughs> and then people are spamming ASL and I was like, what does that mean? And they're like, age, sex, location. I'm like, I don't have sex. <laughs> I don't understand. What do you mean? So what is that gibberish? Yeah. Oh my I god, like I don't 12 have sex. I don't have sex. <laughs> the internet is a scary place. I remember when I was young, like the first chat room I went to, this was when I was really into Dragon Ball Z. And oh, they yeah. had like Dragon Ball Z RPG chats on Yahoo. And I remember just being like, I'm like Bulma and like I really love Vegeta and all this stuff. And now like thinking back on it, like I was like 13, 14. My parents should have stopped me. Like I'm, I'm <laughs> glad that like there's stuff like this Nintendo website where you can go on and it's like it feels like it's a very safe place and there's no weird scary things going on there <laughs> so that brings up a good thing you know I mean you just told us one thing you know a site that you used to go to as a kid what sites you know did you guys go to as a kid like what I guess the internet wasn't really around much <laughs> when we were kid kids but maybe for Etta <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, 
Uh, what, uh, just any any GeoCities website. Oh, GeoCities was the best. Oh yeah, any, every website. website you yes. went to was made on GeoCities. <laughs> Angel <laughs> Fire <laughs> wasn't that one? Yeah, oh, that was another one. So, yeah. Episode Zanga. Of pod. H- hotmail. Yeah. Hotmail. You just in your Hotmail. Oh, I love my Hotmail. I use AOL mail. Hotmail. I had AOL. Yep. I was going to say AOL, mm-hmm. and then the other time besides AOL, it's where I really started using computers was when MySpace came out. Otherwise, bef- before that, it was just computer games, not actual internet. I'd go to, like, yeah. freearcadegames.com and oh, things yes. like that and just play all the arcade games. By- Virus City, oh pretty much. <laughs> Neopets, yeah. anyone? I know we kind of talked yes! about that, but Neopets was freaking yes! awesome. It was freaking awesome. That That is how I learned how to make graphics, actually, because so they so on Neopets, they had oh. guilds, and oh. I would sit there on GIMP and, like, figure out how to make the layouts and stuff and then sell them to people for gold. Oh, my God. Yeah, I was you. a little entrepreneur. I was I was so bad at making money in that game. I was the person that would go to all the games and like try to spam all the different games to get gold. And my brother, I taught him how to play Neopets, and he got really mad at me because he was like, "That's a horribly inefficient way to make gold." And he became a millionaire. And I don't know what he did, but I was not good at that game. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. All right, we're gonna go on to the next topic. Everybody good with that one? I mean, mm-hmm. it probably doesn't hit you guys as close to home without the babies, but in like, <laughs> I'll give you guys like five well, years. You have, you kind of have kids, right? Yeah. So, so what's your opinion on it? They're so way too young. I would never yeah. let them touch the internet. Really? Oh, hell no. Oh, hell no. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> um, yeah, YouTube, I mean, YouTube was kind of a thing in this household for a little bit, and the problem with YouTube is all the suggestions on the side. Oh, yeah. And so they would take my iPad, and then the next video would pop up. They clicked on. So they'd go from, like, cute little fuzzy cats to freaking snake-eating alligator and forks <laughs> that won't go away or just, you know, stuff they just don't need to see. Mm-hmm. Okay, so this one's fun, and I know this is really going to hit home with uh, Saber, myself, and I know we got days kind of into this, too. So Tetris, guys is going to be turned into an epic sci-fi movie by the Mortal Kombat movie producers. So yeah. just saying, I i mean, at first I saw this news kind of hit yesterday. Um, and, of course, our email was kind of going off with all the stupid-ass, like, jibs and jabs of trying to be funny. Um, but I thought it was a joke at first. And I, and I don't think it is. So we're going to bring it up <laughs> for you guys to kind of just see. I got this from Polygon, but uh, what the hell do you guys think about this i love it <laughs> i love it <laughs> okay i can who's watched the mortal kombat movies me yeah, it's, what, it's me. my favorite movie yeah, ever so good. okay is it was it actually good because i heard it was yes yeah yes you're probably talking about the new one so bad oh yeah you're talking about the new one you gotta talk I'm about, about the old 1995 ones. Yeah, oh bad, okay like, sorry oh, yeah. i was talking yeah. about the new jamie chung yeah. one which yeah. was i like, haven't seen the new one uh-uh, i haven't either I just don't you can't let anything the mess either. up the, the 1995 glory of the old mortal that was movie. good i loved that back in the day oh my <sighs> gosh I, either way I don't know. I, I watched it like a hundred times. That's like one of my favorite movies ever of all times. Like I remember being like so amazed by like the special effects. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. It's like my favorite <laughs> game ever. And now I get to see them in movies. And like, even now when I watch it, like I'll be flipping through the, the you know, the TV channels. And if I'm on TBS, like, you know, they always replay like older movies. Like I will stop what I'm doing no matter what to watch that movie. Mortal Kombat, number one. Number I, one. I like the comments too. I have no idea if I want this. <laughs> Child, childhood memories are about to be ruined <laughs> you know no matter what I'm gonna watch it mm-hmm. like I will see it I don't give a crap people say it's the worst thing that's ever come to the screen I am going to watch it because I have to yep I, I just, just I can't even imagine what like what the hell is it going to end up exactly. being? Exactly, that's what I'm thinking. Are the Tetris right. pieces gonna be like, so, like the 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 straight ones gonna be like a good person, yeah. and then like the <laughs> weird shape one is gonna be like an evil person because it doesn't. <laughs> maybe it's an epic sci-fi story. No, that's what no. they've said. I've got it. I've got. It. It's gonna be like the last Starfighter, right? Where this kid's gonna be really good at Tetris, and then these <laughs> aliens are gonna come and take him to Tetris fight world. some. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it just, you know, something where he needs his Tetris skills to win. 
maybe it'll be like Tron Legacy. You guys remember that movie that came out a couple years ago? And I mean, if you look at if you look at the game Tron, like I would have never thought about how that would become a movie. And it was, you know, a big science fiction action thriller. Maybe maybe they'll go in that type of route where you'll have like a story that you can actually follow. Because is there really a story to Tetris? Uh, no. <laughs> no. No. Can I just watch yeah. Hugs comment in chat real quick? He says it'll be a blockbuster for sure. Ah, uh, no! <laughs> Dude, I should have pulled up all the emails from yesterday. Like someone was like, Oh, I already read the script and some of the lines were cut. And like just stupid <laughs> stuff that was I was just like, seriously guys, you're supposed to be working. It was like 20 emails. Too. Yeah, I I was like, they were funny, them. but they were dumb. <laughs> the story of Tetris is that the blocks are aliens from outer space. Every time a block lands, an explosion occurs. See, I never knew that. One, one of, of the, the blocks meets Megan Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? One That's of the blocks someone... meets Megan Fox? <laughs> oh, oh that God, needs... no. You just ruined I would... it. I would definitely ruin <laughs> it. Dude, I love Megan Fox. You can't hate on Megan Fox. Like, she'd be amazing in the Tetris movie. Just need Michael Bay. Yeah, yes. Oh, for oh. a comment in chat, Ridley Scott adds some aliens into Tetris. I wish Ridley Scott recently said that aliens are no more, and he is not going to include aliens in Prometheus 2, and I've written off Prometheus completely. I'm sorry. I just had to put it out there. Oh, <laughs> shit. That movie made you so <laughs> mad, dude. <laughs> I love aliens. How can you just not include aliens in things anymore? That's ridic it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm done. <laughs> He's gone forever. Gosh. <laughs> Kim is oh. mad. Back to Tetris. <laughs> I mean, what what other games, like retro games, have been turned into a movie? Doom. Oh, Doom was super good too. Never it saw was it. So bad. What? Uh, the the movie was a little rough. It, it, it rough was in, in a great way. Okay, like you and guys. A, oh, the cheesy sci-fi films. I just didn't try to life. have a story. If it was just action, I was exactly. so down for that. But they tried to. Is that the one with like the chromosome adding thing? It was so it was something weird. And it just ruined it for me. <laughs> I oh, Battleship. People have seen Battleship. I heard that was Oh, I never I watched that something. one. <laughs> <laughs> Mario Brothers, yeah. Mario Brothers was amazing too. That was another really fantastic adaptation, I think. The old Mario Wait. Brothers one? They haven't done yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I still is. just like Wreck It Ralph, and it's a cartoon, and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite movie ever. Oh my gosh, I cried so hard. You what? what? Why did you cry? How, how, how can you guys not cry? It's... What the hell did you cry Wait, about? During like the during the pivotal movie. scene when he's like trying to save her. Yeah, yeah like girl. <laughs> she does the motion. <laughs> no mento. I started oh. bawling. I was like, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was like the only person crying in the theater, but still. I <laughs> Along with like the four-year-old next to her mom. Yeah, to we held home. hands. <laughs> yeah. That's horrible. You're a horrible person. Oh I'm just kidding. I, I'm just kidding. But... I cry so easily. It's it's not good. Yeah. Somebody else agreed with you. They said Wreck-It Ralph is sad. Yeah, that's DHQK. Oh, uh... Yeah, Dane. Why is it sad? <laughs> Everything comes out to be happy and hunky-dory. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a beautiful set that turns into happiness. Happiness. Yes. All right, we're gonna move on because I feel like uh, we're getting a little off topic with the sad <laughs> sob stories of Sue <laughs> in the theater just bawling out next to a four year old. Uh, um, oh, so this one, I I really don't know much about it. Uh, the news was kind of given to me, but uh, it's the Pokemon trading card game. So I looked it up. It's been out for a little while, but it just hit iPads this week. Um, they, this kind of just brings up the topic of, you know, just trading cards in general. I know when we were younger, it was huge. I mean, Pokemon obviously has been around for years, but not just it's Pokemon, still everything well, that's been out. Right. See, mm -hmm. that, and that's so over my head now at this point. But I, I mean, I bet you I could probably go find Pokemon cards from when I was like 5 to 14 that are probably worth money somewhere. Um... But, I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, everything now, it's on iPad. I mean, obviously, Hearthstone's on iPad. All these games now coming to iPad, making it so much easier for people to, you know, take things that they love on the road with them. I think it's great, and I think we're probably going to lose Seltzer to this game. 
Yeah, for I was those who say, don't know. Yeah. Rachel, Rachel would have loved to talk about this. Seltzer is obsessed with one card games and two Pokemon. And she used to play Pokemon like a ton when she was a kid. Um, so I think we'll probably lose Seltzer. <laughs> She's like, I'm signing off. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we already lost her. We got Sue today. Yeah. yeah. Like, is that where she's at, Sue? Was that she's it? Actually, yeah. She's actually, uh, she's actually in my closet. Yeah. She's, in closet. <laughs> she's playing iPad. on the <laughs> iPad. <laughs> so easy to travel with, huh? Someone stole I'm not going to lie. So, Hearthstone coming out on iPad made me want to get it. And now this makes me want to get an iPad even more because I don't currently have one. And I'm currently waiting for them to announce a new version of it because I know if I go pick one up right now, they're just going to release news about whole new generation of iPads but anywho I had no idea that um, they recently released like the Pokemon trading card game for PC so I, I think I'm gonna have to leave so I'll uh I'm cool. just gonna yeah. sign off and uh I'll, I'll be on there battling away and this is actually really cool because when I was a kid I would be so freaking jealous you guys remember the people that would come to school with their big ass binders yeah. full of their foils and all of their cards being awesome and I would yeah. just sit there and look at them and be like I don't have like an allowance to buy any Aww. of these cards and I hate you guys uh, that, that, was actually, them. <laughs> yeah, that was actually probably me and Kim I'm assuming Kim <laughs> had quite the collection I did <laughs> I have so many old cards, but not for Pokemon. Pokemon is the game that I never got into because I just, it was too cool for me because everybody <laughs> oh, plays Oh, too, too cool it was too for cool. you. I was, so, I was so does busy. That mean, does that mean Pogs was, were too cool for you then? No. No, no, no I had no, a binder wait. of Pogs. I had a binder of sheets, plastic sheets. You put the Pogs in. Oh. I have the I tubes. Had those too. I had, the tubes, I, had the tubes, yeah. I had the tubes, too. I had the tubes. Dude, I remember I was... my school banned Pogs. I mean, we had them they... for probably like a year in like, I think it was in fifth grade when they got huge. And then a year later, they're like, no Pogs at all. Banned. It's gambling. I was like, how the <gasps> gambling? <gasps> yeah, I got yeah. banned for my school, it, too. I could see that. Because wow. yep. kids mm -hmm. would come home and they'd cry, you know, freaking Dave took my my slammer and I'm sad. She took and, my uh, slammer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I took your slammer. <laughs> Yep. And then they're like, you got to give it back. And you're like, I can't give it back. I won this fair and square. What the That's hell? That's the rules. Yeah. The rules of the game. Yeah. I have a see. question about this Pokemon card game, though, because mm -hmm. I remember one of my favorite parts. Like, I don't even, I didn't even play it. I just liked collecting them. And I remember I uh, got this hologram Moltres. And I was so freaking stoked because it had a hologram. And I was like, I got this super cool card. And I was like bragging. And then people would show me their decks, and I'd be like, okay, you have a bunch. But will the Pokemon card game have something similar? Like, I know Hearthstone has, like, the golden cards or whatever, but I, I, for me, I that was no my idea. favorite part, the, the cool, rare yeah. additions. So, have yeah, you guys so having, like, foiled versions of things in card games is so sort of iconic for them, and it's something that's ingrained so much with these card games. I would be surprised if they took it out of the of the digital version, to be honest. Yeah, Magic has it in their digital version on both the like Magic Online and the um, the downloadable standalone version. Yeah. So I'm assuming. Have you guys it. looked at Pokemon cards at all recently? No. Not recently. So I, I, I like see them anymore. pretty often because I go to card shops like weekly and they are so blinged out and fancy. They got like, diamonds there's... on them? They got little diamonds on them? No, no they, they don't got no them? diamonds on them. But oh, they're I like, there's like so much holographic action going what? on. Like, I was like looking at them and I was like, I'm blinded by the glory of like these, like the design aesthetics, like really pretty, like it's super shiny. So I'm hoping that like it will be very similar because I was pretty astounded. I was like, what? I remember these being so simple when I was younger. But now there's like arcs of, you know, shimmering golden light radiating from these Pokemon cards. Can we do and something I mean, for you? What? I feel like I? we should have a night where we, I mean, we don't live by each other, but one night we do all meet up, take some of your magic cards and take uh, rhinestones. Remember when rhinestones were like a huge uh, thing and you blinged everything? So we take uh, your magic cards, we bling them, one of your decks that you're going to play with, and then you go into your magic shop and when you do Friday night, you literally play with that and just see what look people Look at Michelle's say. face cringing. I know. <laughs> like, I just want to see, like, what would their reaction be? Dude, one of, my, one of the like... decks I play is, like, three grand. I don't know if I want to bling that one out. Oh, no. Okay, bring, like, a retarded deck. Just pretend like you don't know what you're doing. And just, like, oh, <laughs> I guess I'm ready to play. It hurts me so bad. 
uh, how about just the sleeves? How about, about just the sleeves? <laughs> we can do the sleeves. Sleeves fine. Oh, that'd be right. Right. Okay. Not my, not my Snapcaster mages. Hey, look, bedazzled magic. I like that. Good job. I like that. Let's the. Petri could you cat. imagine? Could you imagine shuffling that? Like, it would just like you'd be like, crink, 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 and then yeah, like you... gems would be falling off. Like it would be so. You know what? And then when you. When I become a millionaire magic card maker because I blinged them, you don't come and ask me for mine, okay? No! <laughs> well, back to Pokemon really quick. It looks like it's a free-to-play game. It's not only coming out on the Apple Store, but you can also play it on PC and Mac, which I think is going to be really huge because I've been hearing a lot of people say, man, I miss playing Pokemon. I miss playing Pokemon. I'm too old to go in and play it. Like, I just want to play it from home. And so for those of us who grew up on it and maybe feel a little too old, you just sit in the comfort of your own home now. Dude, no, yeah, okay. Pokemon's <laughs> bigger now than ever. They yeah. just had like the Pokemon World Championships. They had over a hundred K in prizes. Damn. Oh. But you go back to the old thing, thing. You would be I remember MLG Anaheim. We were at the convention center and there was a Pokemon tournament convention going on completely separate from MLG. And them bitches were old. Those weren't just little kids, dude. <laughs> they, were, they were about our age. I walked in. I was dude. like, what is happening? This is an MLG. And they're like, no, this is a Pokemon tournament. I was like, what? I, I know a lot of people my age who play Pokemon still. Hmm. Right, they had like, to get I'm just somehow. saying, a group of yeah. my friends said they felt uncomfortable doing oh, yeah, it. Probably. Well, you just have to find the right card shop. Because yeah. based on the environment that you play on, like it's usually really welcoming. Or it, like Crystal said, it might feel a little uncomfortable walking in but like you'd be surprised people still play a ton of Yu-Gi-Oh they play a lot of Pokemon that's, that's the big one in my store is Yu-Gi-Oh yep. everybody plays Yu-Gi-Oh and I was like all I know is activating trap cards that's yep. all I know from that game it's a, and it's I a only trap. know that because it's a meme or something oh right <laughs> exactly <laughs> There's a, there's a card shop in Alameda that um, we kind of walked by, and we looked at the sign, and it said adult Yu-Gi-Oh players are banned from playing here. They are Whoa. not allowed. So I have no idea why. They probably, they're probably like, bitch, thing. I won! Like, two and they like, probably made some child cry. Like, yeah. <laughs> Activated whatever trap card. It, it's supposed to be like a family friendly environment, you know, and like some people get a little aggressive when they play, maybe like me sometimes. And so <laughs> they have to put signs up like that because I mean, think about the, the audience that like the general age that's probably playing Yu Gi Oh! Like if you have like that one like super intense, hyper competitive guy, you can kind of ruin the experience for, you know, a bunch of new kids who might be coming into the game. Yeah. All right, so we've got only a couple minutes left, so we're going to move on. Um, we did start a few minutes late, so we're probably going to extend this by five minutes. But I I know you guys are going to have an opinion about this, knowing you ladies. Oh, yeah. Oh, knowing, I'm ready. Knowing you girls. Bring it. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm messing up my screens. Um, so technically the next topic, the last topic of our day, um, does eSports need ESPN before the mainstream accepts it? Now, this has been a topic that has probably been beaten a thousand times. We constantly talk about it. It's always in the news. Um, and ESPN has done some cool stuff with, you know, Call of Duty, esports, and whatever. What do you guys think? Do you think that it needs ESPN before it can go mainstream? Or do you think it can go mainstream on its own without ESPN? Well, I think it's already gone mainstream in certain countries. Just the U.S. is slow to adopt it. Um, I don't think ESPN is ESPN is needed, but I think it would help it f move along faster. Personally, mm -hmm. yeah, I completely agree. I think at this point, it's just semantics. Like esports, like is it is it a sport? It's like let, okay, don't even let's just not beat that horse anymore. Just let it grow as it's growing, and then at, at a certain point, it won't even matter anymore. Like whether that you know you want to define it as a sport or not, because it'll just be what it is. It, it'll be its own entity. And you can either, you know, at that point, what what can you deny? At that point, the numbers will be there, the money will be there. I mean, the viewership will be there. There's there's just at that point, it doesn't matter. I think so. I think at this point, it's just let it keep growing. It's already growing exponentially. Um, so, ESPN man can say whatever he wants, but yeah, it it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> What I think is interesting is, you know, how Twitch is growing. It's growing very rapidly. And with its acquisition from uh, from Amazon, a lot of mainstream media outlets are actually looking at it now. And, like, obviously, eSports is all hosted on Twitch, and that's cool. But Team Coco 
like, you know, Conan O'Brien, yeah. he's now going to start streaming on Twitch, which I feel like is going to what? bring a lot more mainstream audience onto Twitch, which will then maybe be exposed to esports that way. And so I feel like this whole organic growth is just, it's growing. You know? that's, that's so awesome. I didn't actually know about that. But all I knew is that on his YouTube channel, he has like these funny playthroughs of horror games, <laughs> yes. which I don't know if you guys have ever seen. It's like hilarious because, you know, no, he's I just hilarious. Watch- but, well, and he, yeah. he does it the right way, too, because I actually got brought out to um, work with Team Coco when we had Splinter Cell. So my experience of him, I didn't even get to like meet him or anything. He's very much shielded at the studio. But I met the gentleman, the guy, that I don't even know his name. He's got gray hair, and he does all the walkthroughs with him that's on the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's an actual legitimate gamer, and he was the one that came up with this idea. And he is one of the producers for Team Coco. Um, and Team Coco, oh. if you guys don't know, Team Coco is just everything that has to do with the online for him versus stuff that's actually on TV, um, which is just as big, if not bigger, online. But he will play through the game. He learns the game. So I trained him and one of the celebrities. And then they literally bring Conan O'Brien in, like, last second. He doesn't know anything about the game. <laughs> and bring him in to get, like, those real initial actions. So he's not prepped in any way, which I thought was pretty cool. Because then you know it's, like, real life. Like, what the hell does this guy really think? Yeah. And also, I know on Twitch, they've recently had some really huge DJs stream on it. Mm-hmm. Um, like, Steve Aoki and uh, mm-hmm. who was the other one? How do you guys feel about Twitch transitioning from solely video games, though, to more, like, entertainment? I I don't mind it at all. I mean, that's the reason why they probably got rid of Justin TV is why I have... I mean, because those, those type of DJs, things like that, are things that you would have seen on Justin TV. Yeah. But since, I mean, Twitch obviously outgrew its parent company, it, I mean, it just makes sense to have it on the larger one. Because when you're going to be selling a deal like that, if you're going to be trying to, to work with the partner, they're not going to want to see oh hey we got this Justin TV platform they're gonna want to know about the bigger platform they're gonna want to know why would we not want to do it on Twitch I think I think it's fine because you still have the option to see what you want to see if you don't want to watch it then don't fucking watch it yep I I completely agree I'm just excited because obviously those fans of those music artists I it was like I think it was Porter Robinson was the other one um, but anyway, they're huge artists, extremely huge artists. And being on Twitch, bringing in their fans from their Twitter, because I'm, I'm sure they tweet every time they go live. That's that's like a huge area of people that have that may have no idea about Twitch discovering it and being like, hey, I think I've heard of this game. Let's check it out. And and there there we go. We already have someone else who's now watching gaming, getting into everything, seeing what there is, um, seeing how big it's getting. So. I I think it's great. I also think it's great. I'm excited for the growth of it. I just hope mm-hmm. they allow it to grow more and more. Yeah, I think I think as long as they do it the right way and make sure that um, Twitch stays true to its roots of being gaming, mm-hmm. then I think they'll be fine. The other cool thing which Twitch is doing with those type of you know shows that they're showing, I mean they're not charging you. Where there's other ways that these you know these djs or bands or whoever it wants to be can still live stream their stuff through any platform right but then they can charge you a fee they're doing it for free so why you know like that right there i mean to me is a deal in itself mm-hmm. well, you just have to watch like a couple ads and and you're you're pretty much helping them you know which is yeah well which see, is nice. i watched the steve mccoy one and i didn't get one ad the entire time oh that's nice. yeah i didn't I either i didn't get any i don't think they ran any ads on his set I mean, Have he I did... been saying his name wrong this whole time? I could totally be saying Aoki? it wrong. Okay, yeah, she said Akoi. I was like, Whatever. wait a <laughs> <laughs> Aoki. Aoki, excuse me. But um, <laughs> the only thing that he did need help with, I mean, obviously not him personally, but his production is the quality wasn't that great. But yeah, I mean, that comes with, I mean, our quality sucked when we first streaming, so. He'll back- learn. Yeah, we back, need to I mean, take them under our wing and teach them, yeah. right? Just yeah. give them our email. Like we right. call but I have us. a legitimate question for yeah. you guys. So back to esports. League of Legends, right? I mean, that's probably going to be the example for anything that has to do with esports, ESPN, any of those type of you know networks. Would you personally, it's going to be on TV on a major network channel, not even ESPN, just a major network channel, and it will also be streamed. Which would you 
personally probably watch? Would you want to go to your couch, sit down, relax, and watch it? No. Or would you want to go to your computer and be able to watch it and chat? Like, what what experience would you want? I I want to chat. I, I like to watch the chat. I like to interact with people in the chat if it's not completely troll. Um, but I also don't have cable. I watch everything via the internet. So I would never change, turn to an ESPN channel in my life to watch my video games. Yeah. We'll always be through like a streaming site like Twitch. ESPN yeah, cool. is the one channel that I actually have offered through Comcast online and so like when they had like the Dota 2 tournament the international that was like a pretty big deal and like it, it did get really really good numbers and I think as like an added on value for you know live esports I think it's fantastic personally I do prefer my computer because I can have my second monitor for Destiny now uh, being Yay! able to watch both would be uh, fantastic you know being able to have just turn ESPN on one watch the stream from that because I mean anything that's going to grow the gaming industry is good for us right like anything that grows any sort of video game through the public or ESPN is just going to help people appreciate what a lot of people do like what Sue does for work like that's that's good for Sue because you know if she's live hosting an event and they're streaming to ESPN like that's another thing that she can put on her resume and be like bam okay yeah you know I've, I've done streams for ESPN like that's <laughs> like fantastic <laughs> I, I'll, I'll make sure to touch my hair like that so I mean yeah. what do you, mean? <laughs> you know stream in a sense all right I gotta cut us off with that um we're gonna take maybe one or two questions from chat if you guys have a quick topic you want us to discuss or you just have a random question. Now is your time to shine. And then we are going to be playing a game. So we'll either play Destiny or Town of Salem, whatever you guys prefer. Um, but let's see. Pixel, if you want to see if anybody chats at us, says anything. Otherwise, we can get right into gaming. Woo! Oh, video man. games. Yeah, yeah. Say oh, yeah, I yeah. I liked that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I say something? Honestly, or unless no, no. Unless Days. Go for it. Okay. Well, I was just going to say that Twitch has a Chromecast a compatibility now, so you don't even need to use anything else. You can just stream it from your computer to your TV like you're watching ESPN. So, anyways, I'm done. This is true. It's pretty nice. Uh, Longtran asks, would you ever shoutcast Just Dance if it made it onto MLG? Siren, would you ever do that? Would I? Oh, hell yeah. I did it once. I'd do it again. <laughs> I mean, and it, to, I mean, to be fair, it's not going to ever be on MLG, but it is in WCG. So mm -hmm. this year they are competing on it. Um, not WCG. Jesus Christ. Uh, oh, my God. Why am I blanking on what that tournament is? It's in Europe. The big one. Shumania was on it last year. Uh, ESWC. Sorry. Yeah. It's going to be on ESWC. I'm like, what <laughs> is that one. big one? <laughs> Um, Just Dance is going to be a part of ESWC, and they're taking people from each country, you know, represent, so. Oh, neat. I mean, it is happening. I don't know how they're going to cast it, but it's actually kind of fun to cast if needed. Uh, someone asked, what time will this show be? This show will be every Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so yes, it will be the same time each and every week from here on out. Kim, we cut you off really quick. I'm yeah. sorry. Oh, no, it's fine. I just wanted to go back really quickly uh, back to the topic for the Pokemon trading card game on, like, tablets and, and stuff. Um, just in case you guys were curious, if you guys are not into mobile gaming at all, I would recommend that you guys try a card game, a digital version, because they are, like, the most fun, addictive mobile games that I've ever played. Um, so just in case there were any, like, curious people out there, people have never played a card game digitally, uh, super, super fun. Super fun. And if you get into games, you should totally tweet at us, the Frag Dolls, and leave messages for us and tell us what you're playing. Because I want to know, because I'm constantly looking for new card games to play, especially digitally, because it's just so easy to take a turn and then put it away for a little bit, come back, take your turn, put it away for a little bit. So, super fun, in case you guys were wondering. Petro wants to know, are the adults potentially going to do competitive esports? I asked yesterday, and it seemed like it wasn't a near goal, but it would be awesome to cheer for you guys. Mm. Oh, so no, we've done it needed. in the past, and what the last game you guys comp we competed on was Shoot Mania. Mania. Um, so it's just about finding a game that we can all play and we want to play together. I would personally love to do it again, but I'm getting older, and as you age, your reflexes slow down, so it makes it so much harder to be good. <laughs> Dang it, age, why? Curse it, <laughs> I know. I, I mean... And that has, I mean, that's how the Fragdoll started. I mean, obviously we've, 
you know, moved away from a little bit more because there really are no games right now that are 100% um, being treated the same in terms of, like, League of, Le League of Legends, Dota, like, those type of games. And we don't have on our current team of six ragdolls <clears throat> enough people that would be interested in playing those games. We have two or three for every type of game, but we don't have enough to actually make a full team to do that because we got... I mean, I got hired for per first-person shooters. Um, Days got hired. You know, we knew that she was a first-person shooter. We knew, you know, Michelle was into Dota. Like, each girl for the last probably four years have been hired not solely on a game that they were competitive in and, you know, hired for other reasons. But, I mean, future. You never know what happens in the future. Rainbow. Here's the Rain <laughs> Rainbow. Heroes. Heroes. Yeah, and you guys do. I, okay, Rainbow. I don't know anything about heroes. How many people? It's just a, how five. Many people, five? Mm -hmm. It's five. Dude, we could just play all the games competitively. So you guys play you just... all five of you and just take me off of that team and we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we can just hop every other day. I've already tried practice. to recruit Smix. I was like, Smix, come play. Come push Yo, I'm ready. I'll be your ringer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And totally, then, we totally could re then I could be your coach and we could really call it Team Siren. <laughs> team Siren. <laughs> <Yay! laughs> that would be perfect for Heroes of the Storm. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my can, we make a, can we make a video for that too? Yes. Yeah, All right, so we're going to get into gaming. So this is what's going to happen. Okay, chat? You are going to be kind enough to tell us if you want to play either Destiny or Town of Salem. What you're going to do, if you guys want to play Town of Salem, type in a number one. If you guys want to play Destiny, type a number five. What? What? Five. What? five. I don't know. It just sounded cool. One or five. <laughs> Why are you making it way harder? It's not. Just one or five. No, you don't write Town of Salem. You say one. Okay. Frag Fragdolls want to play one. <laughs> okay, you five. Guys five. Five. Couple of five, a lot of, oh, a lot of ones. Oh, three. Who threw in a three? Fucking Esper. Oh, that was an Esper. <laughs> yeah. Why is it always me? Esper did say five like five times though. I said it three times. Times five. five. There's four. There's at least four <laughs> of you. Okay. Can can I just do a straw poll really quick? Let's just do a straw poll. That's way easier. All right. People are spamming it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there were more ones in the beginning. No, until there's no. Okay, there's, there's a lot of fives now. A number five. Destiny or what's the game? Uh, Town uh, of Salem. Town of Salem is like werewolves, but on the internet. It's it's literally werewolves, but on the internet. Oh, oh, I'm hurting I'm myself from grinding my teeth. <laughs> See, Kim is intrigued. I'm kind of intrigued. If we play Destiny, Saber and I cannot play because we're not a level yes, you five. Yes, really can. By the, by the <laughs> time so I get to a level five, we'll be done. Well, then next time we play Destiny, you'll be prepared. <laughs> oh, Ouch. Do that. <laughs> I wanna play some Destiny. Me and Nicole have a. We played Destiny with Pixel yesterday for like a hundred hours. Okay, <laughs> I created Literally the straw poll. You guys have like no seriously. We played all freaking night. We were up until one a.m. together playing. My fingers hurt. <laughs> My hands started cramping because we were playing for so many hours. Yeah. Oh, wow. I like My straw poll. You can see the dude. Like, it's real time. Can... Yeah. That. Real time. Yeah. This is this is the future. See, look, now they're like, oh, Town of Salem's like werewolf. Yes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, man. I'm just saying, there's enough people interested in Town of Salem. We could all play together. Just saying. We can have 15 people. <laughs> Esper, go vote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. You guys are trying to, like, make this legitimate. <laughs> I'm down. Town of Salem. Let's do it. No! Let's do it. <laughs> It'll be fun. Where, how do you vote? Where do like, I, I just want to get to level 20, guys. I'm so close to level 15, okay? <laughs> like, I have one more mission away. Like, level 2. Uh, your straw poll is saying that Town of Salem won, so you can't... Um, we have to yeah. wait till 1210. <laughs> oh, my God. How do I... It won't let me vote. How do I vote? <laughs> Quit trying to hack it. No, it won't, it won't even let me vote. It just tells me the total of Here. votes. I'm gonna, Here, go run to, I'm gonna go run to every Check computer Skype. in our house uh, and vote for a. Because <laughs> that'll bounce it out. Nicole, can I go use your computer? <laughs> oh my god, seriously? Dude, there's five computers in the house. I have my laptop under We're here. We're addicted to Dude, Destiny. I know, but it's just funny because I really thought Destiny would win, and it's it totally has not. Oh my gosh. Oh we yeah. Got... Oh wait, they're catching up. It's catching up. Oh, oh it's catching oh, up. There it it's... goes. It's catching up. 
Okay, we, we they only have two minutes left to vote. So two minutes. We'll, we'll oh my god, you guys. We're gonna have people ten. like clear their cookies and re vote and all yeah, that okay, stuff. Yeah, okay, I need to do that. <laughs> Can Town I... of Salem is winning by yeah. 10, though. Yeah. It's a good amount. I feel like we we might. Have you to need to pull that. this up and show it on stream, like the oh, I will. Here. straw poll. Here, you guys. I mean, we could just oh spend God, the special. entire day just playing this. Yeah, can we just watch people vote? Because I'm actually. Yeah. Really yeah this oh, is... it's catching up. <gasps> it's catching up. Oh my gosh! Oh, it is! Oh, no! oh shoot! Five this is away. so dumb. This is so dumb. <laughs> 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 it's 12.08. <laughs> if you love me, vote Destiny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I need to make an account just in preparation for this this game that you're trying to make this us This is play. the longest two minutes of my life. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the clock has not moved yet. So Town of Salem was <laughs> oh, fun. Town of Salem. Oh my god, Town of Salem, you bitches. Oh, oh, you guys, come on. Only four more votes. <laughs> Wait, I don't even understand. I have to create a username. Yeah, just, yeah. just create one real fast. Like, Bob had a baby. Days FD. So, anyways. People are cheating. Well, people are cheating because we definitely do. We can't even get 55 people to enter in tickets for free stuff, yet we already have 56 <gasps> people. How Come am on. I going to cheat? <laughs> Serious, seriously, <laughs> you're so full of that. shit. You are so full of shit right now. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. There, there are no way we have 59 people who voted. There's no so way. I'm I magically got up, went to every computer in my house. <laughs> There's what? no way. We okay. We give out oh, free crap, and we can't even get fifty. We can't even get sixty-two people. Destiny's ahead. To you guys cheated. You, you didn't cheat. actually. No, you fucking cheated. High five, Nicole. Uh, <laughs> all right, so that does we can mean... do two. We can do two. Crystal, you play Town of Salem, and we'll play Destiny. You stay and stream Town of Salem. Oh, that works. I'm happy now. Okay. That Done. Works. I'm playing Destiny. <laughs> Is there a way to play, <coughs> try to play Destiny at the same time? You guys, to play we got 70 that votes. That's, that is such BS. Wow. How are we going to change this? I mean, I know there's, okay, there's like over 100 people watching, but you guys are liars. How? <laughs> oh, wait, because for frag points, the stupid frag points things, it's like, oh my God, free Dude, stuff. Typing? Everybody come. And Typing nobody... exclamation ticket space number is really hard for some people. Is that okay? what it is? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of them type in tickets and then their stuff doesn't get submitted because they put the S. Yeah, she is a sore loser. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Prime. No, I'm not a sore loser. They make me play today, stream, and then after my stream, they're like, we're playing Destiny. I'm like, I can't play Destiny. Why? You haven't, you haven't tasted the Destiny yet. You haven't tasted the goodness. I'm, dude, I, I know you you love Halo, dude. You're gonna like really enjoy it. But I, that's why I can't play it because once I sit down and play it, I can't. I'm not gonna want to stop. No, it's very addicting. My grandma's behind me, and my language was just a little much. <laughs> 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 Did she throw things at you? She's like, "You bad girl." <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. All okay. Right. So, we're so gonna... I think we should let Sue go. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. Give a big love and hug to Sue for bye joining bye. us as our guest bye. this week. Bye. And make sure to follow her. Sue, what's your social media sites? Uh, it is Smixity, Smixity, Smixity on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. Hey, you guys, there the vote go. count is even. It's 50-50. Oh, my gosh. You won't give oh, up. Oh, my gosh. It's 50-50, guys. Just saying. <laughs> All right. I will turn to tides quietly when I leave this call. Bye. Bye. Bye.